in the 1700s and 1800s, the body snatching period, the golden age of Scottish medicine, thank you, Susan. <laughs> Some people made their money by digging up the freshly interred corpses and selling them to the anatomists for profit. You could get anything up to 15 pounds for a fresh corpse, a fortune in those days. It's a fortune nowadays, I'll be a pain up the stair. <laughs> But when it comes to talking about the most famous of all body snatches, there is, of course, some question as to whether or not they were truly great robbers at all. And the truth of the matter? Well, therein lies a twisted tale. <laughs> horse! 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 Do you have glasses, eh? burlesque performer. He's going to the Club Noir tonight. I'm very lucky to have him. <laughs> <laughs> the truth about William's Burton and Hare cannot be ratified. For when one of them told the truth, the other one always lied. Which one was which was not clear, so close were they alive. Swearing blind that they each spoke truth when one of them always lied. Enlightened was this capital, proud Athens of the North. First David Hume, then Adam Smith, and from her loins sprung forth. But ancient superstitions were to halt old Reeky stride, for cutting up bodies after death was more than a bit to cry. How are we supposed to learn a thing about bodies and how they work? We pay to cure a plague of pots. Said Mr Monroe to Burke. Monroe being an anatomist of Edinburgh fame. And Mr Burke being the type of man who loved quick ways to game. <laughs> it said Burke sat in Greyfriars as souls were laid to rest. And squinting in the sunlight thought about how you'd do it best. First with care of the topsoil, for it would have to be replaced. And then to dig some eight feet down, you'd need three men at least. At last, abandoning his plan, William Burke went home. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> but to the detriment of Edinburgh, his Helen wasn't alone. William and his wife Margaret ran a lodge in Tanner's Close. She had a husband, Mr. Law, but he was now a ghost. Thank you. No, he didn't. <laughs> the Hales brought Burke and Helen to Log's lodgings to reside. And here, the gals noticed when one spoke truth, the other one always lied. It was at this time in Tanners, near the west port of the town, that Donald, Hare's old tenant, died. Owen oh, Hare, four pounds. No, four pounds then is not four pounds now. It's a sum you would sorely miss. How far would you go to get it back? Just get a load of dust. They opened the Donald's coffin and replaced the husk with bark. Woof! And took the body <laughs> under the cover of dark. They saw Professor Munro, but instead found Dr. Knox, who asked no questions, gave seven pounds, ten shillings for the corn. A nut. <laughs> <laughs> Another tenant, Joseph, a miller by his trade, came down with something nasty. And as in his bed he lay, Buck and Hare decided that. <laughs> Poor Joseph, he's in pain. And they hatched this brand of murder that was to earn them lasting fame. Have a drink, Joseph. Happy birthday, Joseph. Have another drink, Joseph. You've only had one so far. Here, Joseph, have some PCP to go, Joseph. That's funny. Don't call me that. I kill people. No, I kill people. <laughs> oh, you do now. <laughs> no, I don't! <laughs> Why are you going to lie? <laughs> Dr. Knox was overjoyed. He welcomed them with glee. This time he gave them... <laughs> oh, 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 a really stunking thief. And then again, no questions about the origin of the corpse, and said, I'll gladly pay for more if you had the bar sword. <laughs> we love this way of killing, because it didn't leave a mark. And it meant no filling coffins with twigs or bits of bark. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have to prowl around or lie in shadows lurking. They'd do their mothering at home and call their practice. Birking! Eric, surely. Oh, it's definitely Birking reject. Sorry. Sorry, oh. 
Emboldened by their powers, Williams Buck and Hare went nuts. They killed prominent townsfolk prostitutes in the house. They took a shot from two policemen, held themselves ten pounds. They killed and killed for months on end, their evil knew no bounds. But one night, shouts were heard from Thanos. Mandar, thanks the police! And lodgers found a body in the room that they had leased. They ran to fetch assistance. On return, the corpse was gone, carried through the cow gate in a tea chest before the door. Jesus! <laughs> then, an unnamed source led the police to the lab of Dr. Knox and Atmos, and there upon the slab lay the missing body. And they knew that they had found an answer to the many disappearances around town. Now think back to the start of this. The truth that we supplied, that when one of us told the truth, the other one always lied. The <laughs> testimonies ranged from the surreal to the sublime, to the utterly ridiculous excuses for these crimes. I actually just kind of found the bodies all kind of lying there. Look, it's called physiology, and it could do with a lot of advancing. It's what the angel told me I had to do. I read it once in a Shakespeare called the Spider Baby. It's the brain of <laughs> <laughs> saved more lives than I've ever taken. If you were to ask Mr. Burke if this was all his idea from the very word go, he would reply, no. What? Nothing. Don't worry, I haven't implicated you in any sort of a way. I kill people. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. I kill lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> On the 28th of January, 1829, Stood at the gallows with two confessions signed. Conflicting ones as well, but sixteen murders I admitted. And all involved in every single one here was acquitted. Knox was found innocent of killing anyone. It's thought that he knew more than most about what the men had done. And with a jeering crowd of 80,000, Buck was hung. Buck him! Buck, Buck him here too! And Knox! They shouted as he swung. And when his soul had parted, Burke's body was cut down, and fitting for this monster, the council of the town gave his corpse to one and row to dissect publicly. Proud of thousands of hours to that in answer for his crimes, a mob threw Willie Hare into a vat of burning life! Whoa! It burns! It's fine to do that. <laughs> it's thought he died in London. Not London! Begging blind and quite insane. Oh, well, that'll be grand then. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Hare and Helen, though, were never seen again. Famous the world over, William Burke, William Hare. Up there with the best of murderers, this scheming pair. Kings of all grave robbers, but they never robbed the grave. If only they had never 